Hello, this is Terry Collins. Welcome back. The title of this lesson is the definition of green chemistry. In this lesson, we'll introduce the key definition of green chemistry. We'll analyze the definition to see its strengths and implications. We'll acknowledge a structural barrier to sustainability in university education. And we'll consider other definitions. So here is the key definition of green chemistry. Green chemistry is the design of chemical products and processes that reduce or eliminate the use and generation of hazardous substances. The definition was produced in the early to mid 90s by Dr. Paul Anastas. The two most important words in the definition are design and hazardous. Green chemists design against chemical hazards. It's that simple. Now clearly green chemists must understand the scientific nature of chemical hazards, especially the important ones. How can you design against a chemical hazard that you do not understand? Moreover, green chemists cannot escape acknowledging these hazards and teaching that they must be escaped, even if this means implicitly or explicitly criticizing existing chemical products and processes because it is this acknowledgement of what chemicals are hazardous, as determined by science, that is so central to the authenticity of the field. Let's look at other parts of the definition, the term use and generation. This means that green chemists will look to avoid hazards throughout the entire life cycle of the green product or process they are designing. Another key phrase, reduce or eliminate. This means that while transitioning from a hazardous product or process to a non-hazardous one is the ideal, it may not be possible. Important green chemistry can be accomplished by making significant if incomplete reductions in the overall hazards. And finally, a very critical point. Green chemistry research is approached by identifying a hazardous product or process and then designing against it. Clearly then, the more important the hazard is, the more important the green chemistry work is. Thinking further about the definition, ideally, green chemists will seek to eliminate hazardous substances at their sources, rather than try to deal with them after they've been released. But sometimes, the requirements of technical performance for valuable chemicals are so stringent that it is essentially impossible to eliminate the hazard at the source. Active pharmaceutical ingredients in drugs, highly bioactive compounds, are perfect examples of this limitation. You may be aware that some APIs are becoming water contaminants of concern. In these cases, green chemists will seek innovative, environmentally compatible approaches for reconciling the conflicting performance requirements and the need to protect health and the environment. Well, because green chemists design against hazardous chemicals, and hazardous chemicals are many in number, and the chemical nature of the hazards is often extraordinarily complex, we're left to ask if green chemistry will have a big impact on the following structural feature of chemistry itself. When a young person completes their bachelor's degree and decides to go on to graduate school, they essentially enter an atrium, much as is shown here. Now in my day, many years ago, inside the atrium there were a series of doors for the different fields of chemistry. Inorganic chemistry, physical chemistry, organic chemistry, polymer chemistry, theor theoretical chemistry, etc. And the student would pick one of these doors, in my case it was in organic chemistry, open it, close it behind them. Usually behind that door there was another atrium with the various subfields of, in my case, in organic chemistry. I happened to open the door to organometallic chemistry and then went into that room inside this intellectual edifice and focused to build my graduate PhD work. We focus, we specialize to become powerful scientists. Unfortunately, we miss a lot of what goes on in other fields of uh, chemistry and especially in fields of science outside of chemistry because of the need to focus. It's a very natural thing. Now what's happened in the last decades is that 
windows, if you like, have been put in this door, as the different subfields of chemistry have increased communication, because people have realized that by working together, they're able to do more sophisticated and perhaps even more interesting chemistry. What green chemistry proposes to do is to build another door in this atrium. And behind this door, there are chemists who are equipping themselves with extensive understanding of toxicity and ecotoxicity and bringing that information to de designing non-hazardous alternatives to hazardous products and processes. This is an extremely multidisciplinary field. To become a powerful green chemist, the student will not only have to have deep expertise in fields such as synthesis, reaction chemistry, physical chemistry, polymer chemistry, any of a number of these fields, but also have that understanding and technical prowess complemented by deep understanding of toxicity and ecotoxicity, and especially the material being discovered by environmental health scientists about the low-dose adverse effects of chemicals. So green chemistry's highly multidisciplinary nature means that we will bring people together from a variety of fields to work together to solve problems of producing the products and processes of a sustainable civilization. The current educational paradigm is outstanding at producing chemists who are devoted to achieving high technical performance. This paradigm is essential for developing strong scientists and it should never be sacrificed. Green chemistry does not threaten the paradigm, it makes everything more interesting. Green chemistry will help to produce graduates who have clear insight into the health and environmental consequences that accompany the exercise of the chemist's skills. And finally, there are other definitions of green chemistry. The most important of these is an alternative that was produced by Paul Anastas and John Warner and published in their classic book, Green Chemistry, Theory and Practice. According to this definition, green chemistry is the utilization of a set of principles that reduces or eliminates the use or generation of hazardous substances in the design, manufacture and application of chemical products. Well, this definition is a bit unwieldy. For all their virtues, when the 12 principles are added to characterize the definitional statement accurately, the resulting definition covers a full page. It's really a case of the what, the original definition that keeps things simple and emphasizes that green chemists design against hazards, and the how, the principles that lay out how one should proceed in practicing green chemistry. And there are other slightly modified definitions, but among all, Anastas' original definition is the best.